I've been in the agency space for nearly two decades and worked with thousands of clients. But one thing that I see over and over again is clients coming to me that have had a very bad experience with another agency. In this video, what I wanna do is I wanna outline exact things to look for that good and bad agencies may do because you as the business owner need to be the one that's holding them accountable. Everyone makes mistakes, myself included. But with these tools, you're gonna to be able to help avoid the really bad agencies and the really bad scenarios that could potentially save you tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars. And if you stick around to the end, I've got a free bonus resource that I'm gonna to give to you. It's something really, really great that's gonna help you even more than this video. All right guys, so let's dig right in. Number one, you need to know your contract terms. Do not work with an agency without a contract and you need to actually read that contract. Couple big things you need to understand is price, but you also need to understand the terms specifically like how long do you have to pay for their services? A lot of agency will require a minimum length of term, six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. But I would actually urge you to not accept any minimum terms. I believe that agencies shouldn't require minimums at all. Now that's hard to find. Very few agencies have zero contract terms. Most you're gonna find are gonna be six to 12 months, minimum engagement. And there are good agencies that use that model. So I'm not saying that it's inherently bad, but there are risks with that. If you're locked into a 12 month contract at $2,000 a month and you realize that this agency cannot do this job, are you gonna pay for the other eight months $16,000 just to have the same poor service? For that reason, you should search for people that don't have those minimum terms. But at a very bare minimum, you need to understand what they are. Moving on to number two, ownership. Your ownership of these digital marketing assets, they're your company's intellectual property specifically. And you should not ever under any circumstance give anybody else ownership of that, including an agency. Let's talk about the specific assets in ownership. You have a domain, mybusiness.com. Don't let an agency buy this for you. You need to go to GoDaddy or Namecheap or 101 Domains or wherever you want and buy this domain. It'll cost you probably 10 to $20 a year for this. It's not expensive, but it must be owned by you and you alone, no one else but you. You need to have access to this. It's probably the most important digital asset. Everything else can be replaced, but your web domain cannot. Now, commonly confused with a domain is the website. Before I go into the website, I wanna talk about the differences between a domain and a website. A domain is an address. Mycompany.com is an address you type in a browser. That's what your domain is. A website is a folder on some web server somewhere with a collection of files like a database and code and images and video. And when you go to it, it shows you a web page. That's what a website is. A website is not your domain and a domain is not your website. You must own your domain. Now your website is very typically hosted and managed by your agency and that's okay. But you need to understand the terms of ownership. So going back to the contract, how many months of that contract are you paying for before the website is 100% yours? Or it, if you paid a large build free fee up front, say you, you, know, you had a, a startup fee of like $2,500 and a monthly management fee of $1,000 or what, whatever, just make up numbers here, whatever, if they charge you some large number up front to build the website, do you own it as soon as it's done? And if the answer is no, you're, you've got a problem. If you don't pay a big setup fee and you're just paying a smaller monthly fee on an ongoing basis, chances are somewhere in that contract, there's a certain amount of months that you have to pay before the website is yours. And you need to know what that is. And after you have ownership, even if the agency continues to host your website, which is again, perfectly fine, you need to insist on getting backup files for that website. What happens if that agency relationship goes south? What happens if you leave that agency? It's your choice to do it, not theirs. So you need to get a backup folder that you can download on your desktop or store in your Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever that has all of those files that another web developer could use to recreate that website. Also important in the website is never use a website platform that cannot be transferred elsewhere. I recently worked with a paint contractor up in the Connecticut area 
and he was locked into a contract with a web company. They charged him a few thousand dollars to build this website. A couple years later, he wanted to leave and he wanted us to take it over. He was happy with the website. He liked the website. It was an okay website, but he loved it. And he wanted to transfer the website to our host and have us manage it. Well, two things came into play. One, the web company would not let him take the ownership at all in any way, shape or form, which is weird because one, he paid a lump sum to have that website built. You paid for that website, it needs to be yours. And this, this client got treated very, very poorly. And we were forced, absolutely forced to manually rebuild this website. And unfortunately it cost him another couple thousand dollars to do that. But we didn't want to, we wanted to transfer that website and this other company wouldn't allow it. So before you get some other agency to build your website, you need to know when you're going to own it and how and when you can transfer it, if you can transfer it. And if you're not allowed to transfer it or you never ever become the owner of the website, do not do business with that company, period. Move on, find somebody else. Next category, social media accounts. So think about Google Business Profile, Yellow Pages, Angie's, Facebook, Instagram. Any of these profiles are not your website, but they're partially responsible for your brand's representation. They could bring you leads, they maybe have ads, they may have other things associated with them. You need to own this stuff. The idea here is that you wanna create these assets in a way where you are the owner and the agency is invited as an admin or manager on the platform. Facebook page, business page is created, you invite the agency to manage the page. A Google ad account is created, you invite the owner to manage it. That's the idea of that. So when we're talking about about social accounts and ad accounts and directory accounts and all these other kind of web accounts. You need to create them or the agency can create them with you as the owner, that would be okay as well. But you need to make sure that you are the verifiable owner and that they are an admin or a manager. If you don't and something goes awry with that relationship, they can just hold that asset hostage. So we need to make sure that you know you have ownership of these assets. Next category is gonna be analytics. This one's a little tricky because most agencies, myself included, are gonna have some proprietary analytic tools. We do, we have tools that, that, that we license and we use for our clients and they're actually impossible to transfer to uh, somebody else. They can't take them over, they're ours. We can export reports from them and export data from them and give that to you, but we can't give you the tool. But most of these individual platforms like Google Ads, Facebook Ads, uh, even organic social like Facebook's uh, organic and Instagram organic, they have built in data inside of them. You also have third party tools like we mentioned earlier, like Google Analytics and Google Search Console that you should have set up and all of those platforms and all of that data, that analytics should be yours. If there's a proprietary tool, you can't help that, but everything else should be yours, should be owned by you, no exceptions. The last thing is content. It's very often that agencies, when they create web pages and blogs and social media posts and ads, we are creating content. We are buying licensed images, stock images. We are writing headlines and paragraphs. We are creating links and buttons and colors and, and textures and animations and videos and whatever. We're creating digital media assets. You need to make sure two things. Number one, do you own those assets when the relationship ends? The blogs that were written, the ads that were created, do you own them? And absolutely, this should be yes. If you don't, do not work with this agency. Secondly, something that I see happen is that people will hire an agency and this agency will publish this content, but they'll publish it on, let's say like their blog, but they're not publishing it on their blog as you, they're publishing it as them. So let's just say there's a marketer at your agency named John Smith and they write a blog, the blog gets published by John Smith. No, that's not how that should work. You're the person that, it should, that should be authored. You're paying them, you're paying agencies like us to do something called ghost writing or work for hire. It means that we create this media and at the end of the creation process, it's instantly yours. As soon as we are done creating it, it belongs to you. So it should be authored and published as you in all cases, web pages, blogs, press releases, uh, social media profiles, etc. Now that's a little bit different than ownership of them. We're talking about 
the publishing, like the author on file, or you know, sometimes when you look at a blog, you'll see like written by. That's what I'm talking about. And we wanna make sure all that content is actually authored by you. Now, if any of those things in that ownership aren't correct, you probably should leave this agency or not do business with this agency. Now, let's talk about one other thing here, uh, data and reporting. So we talked about the reporting tools to be used for, but I wanna talk about what you need to look for in your relationship with your agency. Number one, I want you to have transparency of data. What that means is you need to know what the numbers are. Even if the agency created these reporting tools and these dashboards for you, which they most of the time will, you probably don't know that and that's okay, but they're gonna create these tools. You need to know what those numbers mean and you need to see them in the real data, not just summaries. So for example, if you have a Google ad account, you need to be able to have access to the Google ads data in reporting, not just a quick summary. You wanna see the real data. So if something goes wrong, you or someone else can take a look at that data and make sure that they're doing the job that they said they were going to do. Also, in regards to data, I want you to also look for real-time data. So very often, poor marketing agencies, bad marketing agencies, will offer to create monthly PDF reports. So like, you can't see data for, for this whole time, but at the end of the month, we send you an email, and in that email, there's a PDF report. You can click it, download it, and look at it. We'll talk about it, whatever they're saying. It's something like that. The problem with that, with a PDF report, is they can manipulate the data. They can do whatever they want. They can make your impressions look up, your likes and followers look higher than they are. They can make your cost of advertising look lower because they're manually creating a PDF report. And that's not okay. What you want to do, and what we do, is we use a third-party real-time reporting tool. The way that it works is it creates a login and a dashboard that creates pages of data for our clients to easily understand. But how it works is it actually brings in the data from all the platforms in real time. It brings in Google Ads data and Google Business Profile and website data directly into the report in real time. We can't manipulate the data, we can't change the data, and our clients have 24-7, 365 unfeathered access to it. That means at any point in time, they can click a button and look and see how good our campaign is doing. You don't wanna wait 30, 60, 90 days to see a PDF report that's potentially lying to you, or even if it's good or bad, it's just too late. You want to be able to see this data in real time. And the last thing on data is you need to have clear KPIs. You need to work with that agency and understand what they view as the most important KPIs for your business. And you need to bring your most important KPIs to the business and you need to make sure that those align. If one of your most important KPIs is how many leads, the quality of the leads and the cost per leads, and they have some other metric of measuring their performance, then that might not be a good fit. So clearly define what's important to you and make sure that what they think is important is the same as you, or at least that they're willing to, to do the KPIs that you want and to pay attention to those things. And if they're not, it's probably not a good fit. The last point I wanna make here is quality checks. Being able to go behind the agency and take a look at the campaigns and say, hey, this is wrong. This data is not right. Now, if you have access to the data like we talked about, you're gonna see some obvious things. You're not getting enough leads, the cost per lead is too high. You'll see some obvious things. But there's deeper data that you want to be able to do yourself, have one of your employees do, or hire a third-party agency to be able to vet. That part is a little bit too long for this video, frankly. Uh, it takes a little bit longer. So here's the bonus. Remember I told you at the beginning of the video, I was gonna give you a bonus for free if you stayed along this, uh, this far. So we created a course in our website, it's a, a multi-video course, and it's gonna walk you through exactly how to audit your agency's performance. Things to look for from your website, to your SEO, to your ad accounts, your social media accounts, your analytics accounts. I'm gonna show you what it should look like when it's set up correctly, what kind of data to expect, and how to know if your agency even knows what the heck they're doing in the first place. And again, that's too long for me to get into here. It's actually gonna be it's several videos, but I created this course for those that have this problem and need to audit their agency. This course is 100% free, no strings attached, no upsells, no bait and switch. Look down in the comment below and you can sign up there and get instant access to it right now. In recap, 
It's really important to hold your marketing agencies accountable. There's a lot of great companies out there. I know plenty of great marketers. I believe that we operate from a place of integrity where the client's always first, and I believe that we do a very good job. But occasionally, even a great company makes mistakes. I've made mistakes. I've lost clients because I've made mistakes. It can happen. And I ask that my clients hold me to the same accountability that I'm talking about in this video. I'm not holding myself to a different standard than I've illustrated in this video. You need to hold your agency, or if you have internal marketers, you need to hold those people to that standard. Or even if you're already my client, you're working with me and you're watching this video, hold me to the same standard. I promise we're already doing that, but I digress. It's important to do that. You need to know that your marketing agency is actually working for you, getting you the growth that you deserve. And I hope this video has helped you and do that. So check that link below, get that free course to be able to audit them if that's important to you. Maybe the stuff in the video up to this point is enough. And if so, hope that helps. If not, if you wanna learn how to audit, click that link below in the comments. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.